marbles in it, for example. And if you throw marbles at it and watch how the marbles bounce off the sock full of marbles, eventually you'll be able to figure out through your observation how many marbles are in the sock. And they determine that there's three. There's three quarks in the protons and neutrons, which are the primary constituents of what matter is, okay? And then there's, which is interesting because that's just threes. And in rhythm, it's no secret, can be broken down into twos and threes. That's kind of been like understood if you, you know, study music. Everything can be subdivided down into twos and threes. So um, the two thing is what, is what gets really weird because I try and relate this stuff. Music has form, matter has form, you know, there's a lot of parallels between that. You know, the way music is arranged, the harmonics, you know, what constitutes harmony in music has to do with these vibrating entities that, that, that vibrate at whole number ratios, which is the same exact thing that happens in, in physics that constitutes form as we experience, okay? Without that vibration, without those cycles, nothing would be interpreted as existing because the actual stuff is like who knows how many billionths of what we actually experience. What we experience is the motion of all these vibrating particles, right? So there's the, the, the mesons. Now, because I'm crazy and I just, I, I don't know, I think I went way too long without a girlfriend, uh, <laughs> I, I, I tried to figure out what the heck these, these mesons could, could have to do with, with music. And, and so I started experimenting with these frequencies, like this pulse here, okay? Like, what am I playing, Mark? Quarter notes. I am now. Okay, now what I'm playing? Quarter notes. Okay, now, now I'm doing... Dun, dun, dun. I'm doing dotted eighth. Okay. Nice try. Okay, now what am I doing? <laughs> dotted eighth. No, now I'm doing a quarter plus a quarter. I was going to say that. Okay, you, there's no way that you know what I'm doing unless I have a, unless it's a reference, okay? And in music, the reference is sort of a yin and a yang. There's, a, there's a, a front and a back, all right? Now, interestingly enough, I was just reading about quarks the other day. You know, I'm married now, and that's good. I don't think as much about quarks. But um, I, I noticed that uh, there's these things called vector mesons, right? Or mesons, they're pronounced. And uh, I thought it was really, really weird because I've been, like, doing all this weird thinking for a long time. And I found this sheet in the Cyclopedia of Physics. I'm really a weirdo. Um, that has the, the plot of the, uh, um, the 16 vector mes mesons, which it are, are, are plotted in three-dimensional space. There just happens to be 16. How many mesons are there on the, on the, there just happens to be 16 on the meson sheets, pure chance. And if you look at the names of these, of these quarks, the up, down, the, the thing, and you look how they're configured, it is bizarre how similar they are in terms of the, the, the you know, quark and anti-quark. That's another thing that's weird. These quarks sort of pop in and out of existence. They annihilate each other. So what do they actually do? What's their function? They don't actually, you know, my, my thinking is that, that they help frame our perception of what it is we're doing, okay? It's like if you take this pulse right here. Like, we'll think of it as a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, we'll think of this as like a baryon, in a sense. There's three, three things per in, in a group, there are groups of threes, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, now, if I take this pattern here, all right, so I think of this as a dotted eighth, in a sense, tick it, talk it, tick it, talk it. If, if I repeat just the first, if I break it into two beats where it is, tick it, talk it, all of a sudden I have this thing, it sort of materializes out of that, okay? Or tick, talk, tick, talk, tick, talk. All of a sudden I have three things going on. There's that number three again, all right? And it's the interaction of those threes with this yin and yang that defines an actual context for this stuff to exist because th these particles are going all the time. There is this non-stop continuum of vibration ever since the, the Big Bang, which to me is like the ultimate fundamental pitch of the universe. You know, that's like everything else is, a, is vibrations and harmonics and harmonics stacked up on that too. They're vibrating at trillions and trillions of cycles per second, which is, you know, basically where light manifests. By the way, the primary colors of light correspond to these twos and threes and these, the fives, okay? Anyway, so I'm experimenting with, with rhythm, and I'm doing this first sheet, the first ticket to be talking to me sheet, and thinking twos and threes are super important. Um, so I, I learned to divide, like, primary pulses into one, two, one, two, one, two, and then twice as fast, which is like the same frequency, the same notes as the octave higher. I don't have time to go into all the specifics. <coughs> and then, uh, and then the, the six, seven, and eight is, is, in a sense, the groupings of the threes, the primary groupings of the threes. Okay, so this is the sense you're your meson and your baryon sheet, and then the, the lower right hand, the 9 through 12 things are just two adjacent strokes, which would still 
basically uh, it functions as, as uh, the, the, the mesons. Don't worry about that. Um, but I, I'm doing all this stuff, and then I just out of curiosity, I thought, I wonder what phi's would do. I wonder what effect that would have. Um, so I came up with this second sheet, the second tickety me me sheet, um, sometimes referred to as the New Testament by some of my students. Um, and it wasn't my idea. Um, but uh, it's all about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and superimposing groups of those, like the same five pulse, but one out of phase, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, that's what the four quadrants are, 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 are based on, right? So I started experimenting with these, and they just seem to take it beyond, you know, the initial just working on twos and threes. All right, all of a sudden the phrasing became easier and more fun, and it seemed to really enhance the creative process, because my whole thing with this concept was absolute fundamentals, absolute basics of, of rhythm that I wanted to get at. Um, and I didn't want to get complex. I started experimenting with sevens, and it didn't. See, it seemed too easy. Once you get through the fives, like a bum, 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 it's just easy. I could feel a one. Okay. Fives, however, was a different story. That posed another layer of, of complexity and challenge. So I added this sheet. Okay, the fives. I thought that those were fundamental to to rhythm and time, and understanding it. Okay, so. It, uh, Two and a half years ago, a physicist in Japan um, discovered what he thought was a five-quark hadron. And then a year ago, last fall, it was confirmed by three other major laboratories around the world. Um, there's still some debate about it, but they call them pentaquarks. So you got your mesons, and your baryons, and your pentaquarks, right? And they, but they actually incorporate the, the, the pentacorks as, as part of the baryon family. All right? if you, this is just some weird coincidences that keep popping up in my, my weird sense of research. <coughs> if you look at this baryon sheet, you've got this, you've got the mesons in the bottom of it. I just, I don't really remember what my logic was, but I incorporated this five node grouping. If you run down this way, it says work, you can't see it's been photocopied a million times, work measures, columns, and rows, right? If you go down this way, the bass drum is funny. <laughs> Five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. You're doing a pentacork type concept, principle, while running the baryons and then the mesons all at the same time. So you get all the three of these things interacting. They all belong along to the baryon family, but it's just kind of interesting to me that uh, now pentacorks are standard model um, subatomic physics and string theory. How much time do I have? Um, is based on loops, okay? This whole principle of understanding time really comes down to. Uh, the fact that everything is these little little loops, and then it, you know, it's our perception of them. And in terms, of, you know, my thinking is they, you know, how they react with some framework of time. Um, oh yeah, and this other thing recently they talked about how the the, the vector mesons um, create a three dimensional backbone to matter, which I think is really weird because. They create a backbeat in music, in a sense. It's, they, 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 that's why you're, you know, in jazz, you're, you're dividing that distance in, in rock. It's a backbeat. That everybody knows that. And it's these little, once, once again, one more little consistent term kind of keeps coming up. Okay, that's it.